and Jordan segment comes to us from Tucson this week. Walking on brought to you by Venezia's Pizzeria. And on the surface partner, they've quadrupled they, the Wildcats, their win total from a season ago. Year two for Jed Fish. Is it a success or does it come crashing down if they don't beat the Sun Devils on Friday? I think you got to look at the bigger picture for Jed Fish and this program, the progress they've made in just one year, the talent they've brought in in one full recruiting class, and now they're building upon that, as you said, four wins, one of them against the top 10 team in UCLA. It would be great icing on the cake for them to win the Territorial Cup, but they're already starting to process that, ready to go. Typically, it's a 24-hour rule to process games under Jed Fish. Coming into the Territorial Cup, it's 24 minutes. They are laser focused for this game. It's been quite a while since the Cup has resided in Tucson, but they are trying to change that on Friday. To me, the Territorial Cup is its own game. It's its own game in this season. It's an 11 game season plus one. And it's our job to figure out a way not to let that plus one affect any outcome of any other game. Locker room also understands and knows that um, uh, we're on to the team up north, and that's where our focus is uh, starting now. And coming up later in the show, plenty of local players have played in this game, including Terrell Suggs and Bobby Wade. Their friendship, rivalry, the mutual respect for each other, I was able to sit down with them, and that's coming up later in the show. All right, partner, we'll see you there in a little bit. Good stuff. Now let's head over to Sun Devil Stadium, where we're joined by Elliot Gabay and Jordan Spurgeon as we look at the Sun Devils side of it. They're a good team down there. And uh, if we don't prepare right, we get embarrassed. Well, Kyle Soli sets the tone. And now we bring on board Eliev Gabay and Jordan Spurgeon. They both join us from Tempe, where ASU is getting ready for Friday's game. Um, this happened on Saturday when he said it after the loss to Oregon State. And Eliev, you were there. What were your thoughts on that? Well, right off the bat, Brad, the first thing I thought were long gone are the days of the 70 point performances <laughs> for ASU at the teacup. I think it shows the respect now that ASU has for U of A and the program and what they've done so far under Jed Fish. And I agree with him. They cannot mess around. U of A looks better right now. And, uh, you know, they're going to have to show up. Spurge, what do you make out of this matchup? What do you make out of this week's game? This is going to be, like Elieff said, nowhere near 70-7. to 7. Think high scoring potentially. I think U of A's offense is phenomenal. Defense needs some work. ASU's offense has looked clunky. So what can they do against a defense that has given up maybe historically amount of yards this season? They've, they've been pretty bad on defense. But I think it's going to be an exciting game. And, and like Elieff said, I think U of A could be the team to beat. And so if ASU wants any chance to win this game, they're going to have to prepare with a different mentality than they have in recent weeks. What are the two you make out of Sean Aguano? I mean, he's had his opportunities this season, looked promising after the win over Washington. It's doubtful in my view that he will be the coach uh, after this week's game. I wish that he would be given a full deck of cards, a full season. That's not been the case. You guys have been around him though. Elliot, what did you make out of Aguano, or what have you made out of Aguano so far? Passion, heart. Everything that you would think he would bring to the position is what I have felt he's brought to the position and to the program. I think we've both also yeah. noticed that the guys have believed and no matter what the score is, they keep bringing it because their leader keeps bringing it. And I think that's shined through. Yeah, accountability is the first thing I think of. He holds himself accountable in every press conference, especially after losses. That's on me. He holds his players accountable in practices, kicking some out of practice if they show up late or if they're not giving effort. And while this season, I know we've talked about it before, all of us in situations, it's never that fun when the season for U of A and ASU comes down to, okay, who won the Territorial Cup? No bowl game to speak of, nothing to speak of, but you get some bragging rights and some pride if you win the Territorial Cup. But I don't place that blame from Arizona State's perspective on Sean Aguano. The amount of respect that I've learned from coaches through these last six weeks is nothing short of amazing towards Sean Aguano. When you're out and you're doing your thing, and Ellie, you jump in on this as well, but let's start with you, Spurge. The respect on the high school level and recruiting, because that is so important, and fans here want to know, what is it really like? What are you guys really hearing about him in that space? There's not a single bad word said about Sean Aguano in the high school space. Every coach I've talked to, every player that's had an interaction with him 
has been singing his praises from the rooftops. They are thrilled with him. Doesn't matter if it's Hamilton, who was his rival when he was coaching at Chandler. Every single coach knows that he wants what's best for these Arizona kids, and he wants to recruit the best players in the state. And the only other guy I can think of that gets that kind of respect that could potentially be in this coaching job search is Kenny Dillingham at Oregon, just because of his ties out here. He really just gets to know these kids. There's a couple kids that they felt like he was the first coach, and there's kids with 20 offers that have finally talked with him that said he was the first coach that really got to know them on a personal level. And I think that speaks volumes to just who he is as a person and as a coach. And I wanted to piggyback off that last point you just made. The recruitment aspect is almost like a finally. It's about time. Someone is paying <laughs> attention. And I think uh, it's been a big, big thing for the confidence of a lot of these Arizona high school athletes. It's good stuff there from both of you, Elliot Gabay and Jordan Spurgeon. Good job, guys. Thanks. Thanks, Brad. Thank you.